Master Ken here with another secret street fighting tip. Recently someone asked me how I would use my belt as a weapon. A lot of people don't realize this, but in the hands of an Ameridote specialist, anything can be used as a weapon. I once beat the bejesus out of somebody with a bagel. As long as you are properly trained, you can weaponize anything. Today we have a new student named Gary. Welcome. Gary, do you have any previous martial arts training? A little bit, Kung Fu. Okay, so no. What we're gonna do today is show how to defeat somebody by turning your belt into a weapon. All right, now, when we're talking about weaponizing the belt, one of the things I encourage people to do is utilize the length. The average jujitsu or karate belt is eight feet to 12 feet in length, so you wanna use that length to attack your opponent from a distance. In this case, I want to lure my opponent, just like I'm fly fishing, okay? So I'm gonna tie something to the end of my belt that will draw my opponent into striking distance. Now, depends on what you're trying to catch. For instance, if they happen to be a fan of Steven Seagal's, you could tie the belt to a dozen donuts. If they're a UFC fighter, you could tie this to some performance enhancing drugs. In this case, Gary is a fan of Kung Fu. So, Kung Fu people, love nunchaku because that one movie where bruce lee was swinging him around doing that fancy bullshit. this is the right lure to draw him into striking distance Ooh, all right so that was a long distance method of weaponizing the belt now we need to move to a medium distance. Let's say you're a little closer to your opponent, perhaps half a belt length away. You need to drop below their eye line, approach them very quietly, tie the belt, and then move away so that you can catch this kung fu in what we call the sadai snare. Sadai, of course, is Chinese for belt. That's because they used to make belts out of grass, which is also known as sod. So they would uh, sometimes in their belt making machines, they would get sod splattered in their eye. Sod eye snare. Before we go any further in our lesson, I wanna to mention today's sponsor. They did sponsor a previous video and they were a little unhappy on how I described and presented the product. They said I didn't do it correctly. Um, I didn't read any of the email after that, but I thought I would use the powers of deduction to talk about the auto blow. Uh, now, as far as the design, this looks to me like a lung, like if a hot dog came to life. What I assume this is for is perhaps medical training. If you've used a Maradote on somebody in the street and you don't want to be charged with murder, they're, they're, you want to bring them back to life, you've stopped their heart, then you just utilize the mouth here. See how that's like, it looks like it's struggling to breathe. Okay, what you would do is actually just blow into this. That's probably why they call it the auto blow. So you just be like, But if I'm wrong, um, Gary, maybe you want to take the uh, manual and we'll just hand it over to you. Uh, I, I should probably just take care of this one. Hey, Nate. Uh, hey, hey guys. The, how are you? Uh, it's the Auto Blow AI Plus, actually, Gary. Um, you're new. I understand you want to know that. It has new speed controls and it has experience level controls. And I actually have it um, all set up on my phone because that's also a new feature. Uh, connects to Wi Fi and you can actually have somebody do voice controls from anywhere. So um, you can go ahead and take that. Sure. And uh, I'll just, um, I'll be back. I, I don't need that. You know. Okay. By the way, Gary, I got a little kink in my shoulder. Could you rub that out for me? Good, faster. Uh. A little harder. Oh. oh. Okay, pause. Don't pause. Don't pause. All right, keep going. Almost finished. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, finish me. Oh, God, finish it. Oh. 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 Thank you, Gary. Oh. Now let's talk about a technique where we move from medium range to close range. Let's say that we are so close to our opponent, we're going to have to begin 
unfolding the belt in order to use it properly. What you're gonna do in this whipping technique is fold the belt as many times as you need to in order to have the proper distance from you to your target and then grab one end and whip it into shape. Shape it up. Get straight. Go forward. Move ahead. Try to detect it. It's not too late. To whip it. Whip it good. Whip. Let's talk about one of the most intimate and effective ways to weaponize your belt in a Meridote, and that's something I call flossing. What you wanna do is actually take the belt and force feed it down the mouth of your opponent. What you wanna then do is work it through their digestive system and pull it out the anus hole, okay? When you go orifice to orifice and then pull a belt back and forth, it causes friction and lots of internal damage. Now, if you don't feel like force feeding it to them and your opponent looks hungry, uh, just season the belt a little bit. You can put uh, some spices, some herbs, some sugar, uh, or sativa if you're watching your calories, and just feed it to them like so. Then grabbing out the other end and flossing. <laughs> then once you're finished, just pull out. Also might need to wash it afterwards. For our final weaponizing the belt technique, this is something I like to teach because it can utilize your opponent's belt against them. And if you have your own belt as well, it becomes a double whammy, okay? So you do whatever you need to do to distract them up here, do some sort of strike here, okay? Distract them, reaching down now, untying the knot. And then what you do is you wanna grab their groin, pull it through the belt, and then retie the knot like so. This is actually harder than it looks. The technique, not the, you know what I mean. Then once you tie the knot, you've got what is called a nut knot, okay? Cutting off all the circulation to the groin, causing plenty of problems down there. Then to compound it, take your own belt, wrap that around the neck. This is something I learned from David Carradine, okay? Circulation stops, he passes out. And then, as always, restomp that groin. All right, so that was five different ways that you can use your belt as a weapon. I want to thank our new Uki, Gary, for coming on the show. Good job. Uh, also doing double duty there, cleaning Nate's phone. And uh, just make sure to remember to tune in again soon for another Secret Street Fighting tip. Oops. Here you go, champ. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching our video. Remember, you can order your own personalized video message from me, Master Ken, by going to Cameo. So whether it's a happy birthday, or you want me to tell you, or your instructor, why your martial art is total bullshit, go to Cameo and order your video message today. And remember, always restomp that groin. <laughs>